Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. From time to time, we have received a great many letters from people working in offices, stores, and factories, from people who enjoy smoking but are unable to smoke while at work. Now, these folks report that Horlicks tablets are especially fine for relieving that craving for smoking that so many smokers have. Here's the reason for that. Horlicks malted milk tablets are extremely sustaining and energy-giving, besides being palatable to eat. It is this sustaining quality that has made them so popular with motorists, golfers, school teachers, and with anyone who needs something to relieve hunger without spoiling their appetites. So if, for any one reason, you're unable to smoke during the day, get a flask of Horlicks tablets and take them along to work with you. You can get a handy 10-cent flask. That's just the thing for carrying. Your druggist also has them in larger size flasks in both natural and chocolate flavors. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum returned to Pine Ridge yesterday after a few days' absence, inspired with a determination to make a name for himself in the hometown in spite of the past. He now has the idea of opening a picture show in Pine Ridge and has persuaded his old friend Abner to go in partnership with him in the new enterprise. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store discussing the plans for their new venture. Listen. Well, yeah, but I don't see no use to put up a new building, old Lum. Why don't we just rent some of these vacant buildings that's already here? Well, the uh, trouble is, there ain't nothing around here that's got a slanting floor in it. Got a what? A slanting floor. You know, the floors in a picture show all sort of runs downhill towards the front of it. Yeah, that's right. I never could see no use in it, though. Well, they've got to be that way. Well, them places is hard enough to walk in without having the floors are slanting that you trot three or four rows past where you aim to sit down at. Yeah, but you got to have that floor slanting that way so they can see over one another's head, so they can see the moving picture. Yeah, that does help, I reckon. And another thing, we've got to have a high ceiling in it so the machine that shows the moving picture will be clean up over everybody's head. If you don't, every time somebody gets up to leave or somebody comes in, it'll show their shatter up there on the screen. And everybody will wonder where he come from all of a sudden. Huh? Like in there at the county seat, you, you saw them youngins down there that sits on the front row there making shatters on the screen. They're always holding their hands up and moving their fingers so the shadows look like some kind of animal opening and closing his mouth. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Just take your hand and hold it up towards the lamp and the wall and work your fingers like that. I know how you do it. See, your thumb makes the ears on. Looks like a dog fixing a bite. <laughs> well, that's the way I make a horse there, though. I know how to make all them things. I used to could make a rabbit somewhere or other. Let's see. How, what did I done there? Oh, yeah. He set one fist up on top of the other and somewhere. Well, I don't care nothing about how you make them shatters. It looks like animals. I'm well, what did you ask me for then? I never asked you. I just said the youngins at the picture show in there at the county seat always does that. Well, now, Lama, ain't no use to get them to do it when I can do it just as well as they can. Yeah, but we don't want them to. That's just it. That's the reason we'll have to have a high ceiling so we can get the picture machine up high enough to keep them from doing it. Oh, well, I'll keep them from it. I'll be down there on the front row anyway. Front row? Yeah, I'm going to have a special seat for me right there on the front row every night. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, no. You've got to be back there in the back to take up the ticket. Now, Lum, I told you this morning that the only way I'd go in this with you is for me and Paul and Elizabeth to see the show free every night. Well, you can see the show, all right. Just get your chair and set it back there by the door, and you can watch the picture and take up a ticket every time anybody goes by you both. Uh, you want me to make them give me a ticket every time they come by me, huh? Why, sure. That's what you'll be there for. Well, you'll you have to make everybody buy two tickets, then. Buy two tickets? Why, well, yeah, they'll have to give me one when they go in and one when they go out, too, if they hand me one every time they pass me. Well, why in the world would you want to take up a ticket when they're going out for? Why, to keep them from slipping out. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, one ticket will be enough, I reckon. We make this twice as much money, though, by selling them, too. Well, ain't nobody going to buy two tickets to see no show. I wouldn't sell him two tickets if I could. Well, uh, what if some fella brings his wife down there? You going to make her stand outside and wait till it's over? Why, of course not. Well, now, the men folks ain't going to stand outside and wait. I'll tell you that right now. Well, nobody ain't going to stand outside and wait. If a fella brings his wife down there, you buy two tickets. I thought you said that you weren't going to sell nobody two tickets. Well, what I mean, Abner, what? you just leave the ticket selling up to me. All you've got to do is take them up when they get in the door there. Yeah, all right, but I still don't What we got to do now is decide where we're going to build that building at and what kind of a building we're going to put up and all that stuff. Get this thing started here. 
We're losing money every day by not having this thing open. Losing money? Why, sure. If we do the kind of business we ought to, we're losing at least $25 a day till we get the thing opened up. Well, for the land sake. Well, we better hurry up, Van Lom. We'll have all the money we got there in the bank lost before we get started. Well, that ain't the money we're losing, though. Well, that's the only money I've got. that will have to come out of that. Well, what I mean, Abner, we're losing it, but we ain't losing it. Well, which? Well, we ain't losing none of the money we've got there in the bank, but it's costing us $25 a day till we get opened up. That's profits that we ain't making by not being open. Well, who are we going to have to pay that to? Pay what to? Why, that $25 a day that we're losing. Why, nobody in particular. Bet that that blame Squire Skimps mixed up in it somewhere. No, right? Squire ain't got a thing to do with it. We're losing it, but we won't never have to pay it, Abner. Oh, well, that's all right, then. <laughs> no, I don't care how much we lose, we don't have to pay it. Well, the thing to do is first to get started as quick as we can. We've got to organize. We've got to get somebody to run the moving picture machine. I thought about Cedric's. Yeah, Cedric's uh, be all right, I reckon, if he to feel all right by that time. Yeah, he ain't. Well, I never have found out what's wrong with him. Uh, Why, he might not have found it himself down there the other day on all that barbecue that uh, Clay Forster had cooked up that the folks never ate up on account of nobody coming out. Did Cedric eat all them sandwiches himself? Yeah, might not. Everyone he had stacked up down there. He's been sick ever since. Yeah. We've got to get the thing started, Abner. I'm worried of that. Yeah. We don't want to lose no more than we have to, you know. Well, what difference does it make, Lum, as long as they ain't going to try to collect it? No, I don't care. <laughs> no, this is a new kind of business on me. <laughs> oh, this is a good idea, opening up a picture show. <laughs> It'll just save these folks here in Pine Ridge from driving 20 miles to the county seat to see a show. They'll save the price of admission on gasoline. They will. Oh, easy that much. It'd take more than a quarter's worth of gasoline to drive clean into the county seat and back. And I bet old Uncle Henry Ross would be glad to hear that. Uncle Henry? Yeah. He ain't got no car. Well, no, but he's got that gasoline engine over there that he saws wood with all the time. Well, he couldn't drive that to the county seat. Why, of course not. He couldn't drive it no place. It ain't even got no wheels on it. Well, how's he going to save anything on gasoline, then? Why, he has to buy gasoline for the engine all the time. Yeah, but the only way they can save anything is by driving into the county seat. Oh. They, they got to drive clean into the county seat before they can save anything, huh? Oh, wait a minute now. Uh, Maybe you're getting me mixed up. No, no, that's, that's wrong. It's the ones that don't drive in there that saves on gasoline. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll tell Uncle Henry that then. He can just quit going in there. Start trading over at Mount Ida. Well, it's just fur over to Mount Ida. It's just to the county seat. Uh, uh, does it work on Mount Ida, too? Well, sure, it works on any place. Well, when did they start that? Abner, what I mean, if the folks goes to the show out here instead of going to the county seat to the show, they'll save at least a quarter on the gasoline it would have took them to drive in there. Yeah. Well, if we just uh, charge a quarter and they save a quarter, well, it ain't going to cost them nothing to go to the show then, is it? That's just what I've been trying to explain to you. Dog, we ought to do the business then, Lom. Everybody be going to the show if it don't cost nothing. I don't see how in the world we're going to make any money out of it, though, letting them in free that way. Well, the uh, only ones that'll save anything, though, is the ones that aim to go into the county seat, but never. Yeah, but how are we going to tell who aimed to and who didn't? Oh, well, it ain't up to us about that. They don't know where they aim to go into the county seat or not. Yeah, but now they'll catch on to that, Lom. They'll all be coming down there and claiming they're aiming on going to the county seat just to get in free. Get in free? Yeah, if they're going to let some of them in for nothing, you may as well just open my door and let them all in to start with. Don't you worry about that. There ain't going to be nobody getting that picture show free. I'll see to that myself. Oh, yes, they have, too. No, they ain't either. That's one thing that we ain't going to oh, start. Oh, I now. can. I just won't go in on it with you. Well, what's your idea in wanting to let folks in for nothing? We, we can't you make no money. You said this morning that me and Elizabeth and Pearl could get in free for nothing every night, and I don't oh, get if you don't let it, I ain't going to have nothing to do You drive, drive a body clean out of his head, or swan again. Let's get me so mixed up, I don't know where I'm at, even. Why, you're sitting right here in the store. I know where I'm at. Yeah, but you never can I told you. Abner, you, told you, you don't shut up, I'm going to whop you one. I've just well, stood about all this. Well, argument about him, then. Well, Dick, how do you come in? Hey, hello, Dick. I'm just trying to explain the picture show business to Abner here, but I can't get nothing through his head, looks like. <laughs> well, uh, that's what I came over to talk to you fellas about. I used to talk me yesterday about putting up a new bill in here, and... I got to thinking a while ago, why couldn't I rent you fella that old cotton warehouse of mine over there? That'd be big enough for a show. Yeah, it'd be big enough, all right, but it ain't got no slanting floor in it. No. See, picture shows has got to have a slanting floor to them, Dick. Oh, well, uh, it can be remodeled on. The whole thing would have to be done over, but it's a good location, and I'll rent it to you cheap. Rent it now, that might not be a bad idea to ask. 
We could get started a heap quicker that way. And not lose so much. Yeah. How much rent would you have to have for that day? Yeah, you'll have to get that down pretty low the way Lom's got this thing figured out now. That's going to surprise me if we make anything anyway. Oh, I don't know, fellas. It's not bringing in anything the way it is. I'll just let you name your own price. Name our own price? Yeah, sure. Well, I think right, we'll take it. We'll start the work remodeling tomorrow. That's <laughs> Well, it looks like Pine Ridge will soon have their first picture house. The city's first nightlife. <laughs> and now, I want you to hear what two of Lum and Abner's many friends say about Horlick's malted milk for promoting sound, restful sleep. First, here's Mr. Langley of Southern California. My trouble used to be long, restless nights that left me limp as a rag next morning. I was cross and irritable, and I knew it, but couldn't do a thing about it. Horlick soon put a stop to that. If you're looking for something to help promote real refreshing sleep, I certainly can recommend Horlicks. And listen, folks, I mean that. And Mrs. James of Long Island, New York. I've had a lot of worry lately, and it seemed to affect my ability to sleep well. That's what started me on your Horlick plan. I heard you say it soothed and relaxed if taken hot just before going to bed. And soothing and relaxing was just what I wanted. I need hardly say that your plan was all you said, as well as all I hoped it would be. Here's wishing you lots of success in the future. Every day, from many states, we get letters just like that. If you have trouble getting to sleep and sleeping soundly, you can't do yourself a better turn than to drink a glass full of Horlicks malted milk hot upon retiring. If you don't already have a package handy, get some from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.